So first of all, just a refresher, this is the project we're talking about. I've got an old Slick 150 PLC and add-on I.O. And we replaced it with a single Micro 830 PLC with this little add-on power supply. And this single PLC was able to handle all of the I.O. So we didn't need this. We didn't need to individually replace the add-on I.O. So today we're going to be talking about how do we take the program out of here and upgrade it so that we can put it in here and have it work. I also want to point out a little more closely these I.O. addresses. And you don't have to remember exactly what they are, but you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 101, 102, 103, 104. And then we've got outputs similarly here, 12, 13, 14, 112, 113, 114. And this is all elaborated on in the manual, how the numbering scheme works on these. They continue for that add-on I.O. module in a specific way for addressing. So before we do the upgrade on this, we're going to map all of this I.O. And we had, a, we had this sheet to start out with, and this includes, if I zoom in, this is the PLC and the expansion I.O. This has descriptions for all of the I.O. So this is really nice, this helps us a lot. Um, so we made a spreadsheet that includes these names and these addresses. And then we also added the new addresses where we plan to land it on the new PLC. That's going to be important to make sure that we upgrade the program and also do the wiring in a way that are compatible with each other. So this is what we did with the I.O. just to document the changes that we're making. First of all, this should look fairly familiar. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 101, 102, 103, etc. These are the inputs. And we also tried to keep track of what's on the CPU versus the expansion module. So we just made that note here. And as you can see, there aren't actually a lot of inputs on the expansion module. Just a few down here. Also note, again, this address scheme, this is noted in the manual, how, how to look at expansion I.O. Uh, addresses. So I'm not going to talk about that too much here. I'm just pointing out that it exists. Same thing here with the outputs. Again, 11, 12, 13, and then 111, 112, 113. This should look familiar. It's just like that picture I just showed you. And again, we're keeping track for our sanity's sake when we're doing the upgrade between the old CPU and the old expansion. And then again, these, these descriptions just came straight out of this documentation here that we got. And then we assign new addresses based on our new PLC selection. And this was intended to keep the wires kind of in the same order on the panels. You'll notice this is 0, 2, 4, and then 1, 3, 5. And that's just because these alternate like that. So we're trying to keep the same arrangement for the wires. And uh, do you have to do that? No. Is it helpful? Don't really know until you get there, but these wires all have to be a certain length to make it to the inputs and outputs that they're going to. So the ones on the end are probably a little longer than the ones in the beginning. And if you keep them all in the same order, you've got a higher chance that you can reuse those wires instead of having to rip them out and rerun all the wires. So, okay, we've talked about the I.O. We've talked about the physical bits. Let's start looking at the software. How do we get software out of this old PLC? Well, we're going to use a an adapter that looks a lot like this. And you can buy these on eBay. Uh, sometimes you can buy them other places. You can also just, you know, get a hold of your local distributor. They usually have one of these and they'll, they'll often help you come out and, and get this program out of your PLC. The software to connect to a Slick 150 PLC is this Allen Bradley PCIS and you can get this again from your distributor or you know ask the distributor where to find it where to download it it's a very simple very old program it, it's got kind of an ms dos look to it i would guess that it was actually born in the days of ms dos it'll only run on a 32-bit machine and uh, i don't think it's supported on xp but i'm gonna demo it on xp here uh, this is a 32-bit Windows XP virtual machine that I have, and if you're 
curious about what that means. I've got a ton of videos on virtual machines and how to use them for this kind of thing. We've actually got two virtual machines open here and I'll be jumping over to the Windows 7 version in just a second. First, let's talk about this. So if I double click on PCIS, it's gonna tell me that it's looking to open COM1. So if we had that adapter that I just showed you attached, of course on a modern laptop, we'd probably have a USB to serial converter and then a serial to that thing converter. Um, we'd wanna make sure that that's set up as COM1 in the device manager. So I'm just gonna ignore this for now so I can show you what the application looks like. Here it is. I'm gonna just click a key so that we can go on to the next piece. And in, in really high level here, I don't have a PLC to demonstrate this on right now, but we're going to do a program transfer where we try and take the program out of the PLC. And I've seen it where this uh, you know might not work two or three times in a row and then it might work the fourth time. Sometimes you just gotta keep trying. I don't know why that is. Um, but you know, when you're dealing with old software, sometimes it's a little weird, old software, and again, a, a chain of adapters. Um, so keep that in mind. If it doesn't work the first time, try, try again. After we've got the program out of the PLC, and I'll just click on F1 here so we can see generally what that looks like, we would do an F1 to read it. And if I click on that, I can read it from the disk or from the Slick 150. I think this works with slick 100s as well. I think that's why they don't say 150 on here. I'm gonna say read from disk because I just happen to have a program here that I can read from disk. So I hit enter. This is in that same, this is the 100 file that it's offering to read here. So I'm just gonna click on enter. Yes, that's the one I want. And it, it's in the same directory as the PCIS exe file. And I think that's probably the most convenient way to use this because otherwise you have to try and find a way to navigate um, to that file. After we've got it open, like we do, we can try a print or a save. I think print is the one I wanna do. And I'm just gonna kinda tab through this or uh, enter, I think. Print, print the lighter diagram, yes, I do wanna do that, so yes. And from rung one to whatever, it looks like there are 37 rungs, yes. Print the cross-reference. This is really nice to have. I'll show you that after we're done. And then we've got a, oh yes, yeah, standard width. And then we've got to give this a name. And I'm just gonna say, can we all, and we get only eight characters, so. I'm just gonna say can too, because I already have a can print, as you can see in the background. I'll hit enter, and that should appear in our directory here. So there it is. This is the same as this. I was just showing you how to do it. So I'm actually gonna delete that file because I don't need it. This is the same thing if I, notice it doesn't have an extension. This is just a plain text file, so we can open it in Notepad. If I double click, it's gonna ask me and I'll say yes, Notepad is the one. And this should make sense to anybody who's done any industrial programming. It's just ladder logic as expressed in ASCII. So it tells me the rung number. We can see there's a rung here with a coil. This is the address for that coil. We can have timers, so like RTO, that's a retentive timer on. It's got an address and it's got uh, other information. We can do a reset on our timers. And this is just contacts and coils like you're used to. If we scroll down, notice it does separate things by page as if we were actually gonna print this onto paper. If we scroll down, eventually we're gonna find, okay, so here's the last rung. Rung number 36. And then we start seeing all that cross-reference that I was talking about. So it's gonna start with inputs, where we've got the address. This should look pretty familiar. One, two, three, and then 101, 102, 103. We've got the element, just normally open or normally closed in this case. And then all the places where that shows up, what rungs, 
And uh, this is obviously a pretty simple program, so that's um, so that's all you need to figure it out. We got the same thing for outputs. And again, this should look familiar. 11s, 12s, and then 111, 112, etc. And then all the internal memory as well. So in, in this case, Slick 150s are using the 700s for internal memory, 700s and 800s. And then separately, we've got counters, uh, counters, timers, etc. So now when we replace or when we upgrade this, I'm not aware of any automated way to upgrade a Slick 150 program. So it's only 36 rungs. We're just going to chunk this in manually. And we're going to be doing that in a micro 800 line PLC, like I mentioned. So if I switch over to my Windows 7 machine, notice it's a, it's a different machine here. Connected Components Workbench is the program that we use to program a micro 830. And you see, I've already got this micro 830 added in this case. If we were gonna start from scratch, we would have this start page, we'd click on this add device thing, and we would select the right controller that we want. I think that's the one we're using. So that's how you would start out. I'm gonna show you here, um, if I double click on this micro 830, we would see that. I don't think we did any configuration on the embedded IO, but sometimes you might want to. This is just general control of the PLC. And then like you're used to in other programming applications, you can add programs, you can add uh, routines within those programs, there are global variables. So let's talk about the variables for a second here. These, uh, this IO, EM, DO, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, this is all of the built-in IO in this PLC. And DO would be for digital output, DI would be for digital input. And again, these are the addresses that we wrote down on that spreadsheet. And in the comment here, we said what they used to be as well. And this is just for our ease of debug and to make sure that the program matches the old program because we're just going to type this in exactly how it was. And then we also put in uh, an alias so that it'll be very readable. It'll be more readable than the last one because now we can say, okay, well, it starts with a lowercase o. That's our convention for this is an output, i for input, and this is the magnet head lower, the magnet head raise, etc. So it should be easy to read this program. We also have some timers and other input or uh, internal bits here that we're playing with. And again, this is just like that export that we had. So here's the program. I'm going to jump back to our printout from the Slick 150. Notice this first rung is just, there's an always on bit, 864, whatever that is. I don't think that's ever actually read anywhere. Then there's also this um, 901, it's resetting a timer, I believe. I think those two rungs we decided not to put into the, uh, into the program because they just didn't go anywhere. So we did clean it up a little bit as we transitioned. So the first rung we're probably gonna see is this one here, rung three, where we've got a normally open with a branch of another normally open around it. Those look like timers because they're 900s. And then two normally opens. Those look like inputs because they're 001, 003. And then they turn on this other timer, 902. So let's take a look. We've got two timers. Oops, two timers. We've got two inputs. And then we've got 902, retentive timer on. So that's exactly what we did. And this just continues down the line. We did this everywhere. And again, you see it's a little more readable because we can see some plain English on here as well as the addresses. And if we hover over any of these, excuse me, if we hover over any of these, notice at the bottom of this little pop-up that I get below my cursor, it shows in the comment there 008. So the old number was 008, the old address. And that's going to help us again for troubleshooting. Um, when we're out there wiring things, we could, the labels on the wires have 
been saying 008, 009, whatever. And so it's just a nice thing to have and to be aware of. So this is really quite simple. It's uh, an easy upgrade to do. This was very fast and very economical. There's always the question, should we rewrite the program or should we just upgrade the existing program into, into the machine? And you know, this is always a judgment call. We've certainly done it both ways. Um, sometimes our hand is forced if a PLC dies and we have to replace it and we don't have a starting point, then we just have to figure it out and rewrite it from scratch. Often I find machines have features that the customer doesn't know to tell us about or that we don't know to look for. And if we start out by trying to rewrite the program, first it takes us more time and then second, there are things that can be missed and so it takes us more time to debug and to test and validate all the features. So to go this method, this is really intended towards being very economical, very um, fast to do the upgrade, to, to do the debug. And certainly in this case, the customer was very cost conscious. So this was the right call. And you know, this program has been running for 30 years or so. It, it's pretty well debugged and they've hardly touched it in that time. So it's not like having a program that might be, that might look a little more old fashioned is going to um, is going to cause any issues for maintenance or for troubleshooting or expansion in the future. This is just a fairly static machine and they just wanted it to keep living for a little while longer. So that's the intent and I think we really have accomplished that here. Anyway, I hope that helps answer some questions. If you've got more questions on programming or this kind of upgrades, uh, please leave a message in the comments, send me an email. Um, I, I like doing these videos. I want to keep sharing this information with you and I hope it's helpful. So if it's not helpful or it could be more helpful, let me know. That's what we're here for. Do check us out on our website. Follow us. We've got YouTubes coming out all the time. We've got a blog where I'm always sharing my thoughts on engineering, industry, entrepreneurship. And if you'd like to just get one ping a month from us with some of the best content that we've put out there, helpful how to's and what's going on with us, we've got a newsletter. Check us out on our website. You can get a free ebook from us on industrial ethernet as a thank you for signing up to the newsletter. See you next time.